Welcome to From Betrayal to Breakthrough. I'm Dr. Debbie Silber, and today's guest is Susan Breton. Susan Breton, intimacy expert to millions, is a champion and advocate for all those who desire intimacy and passion their whole life long. She's co-founder and CEO of two corporations, Personal Life Media Inc., a publisher of heart-connected lovemaking techniques and bedroom communication skills, and The 20 LLC, a manufacturer of organic and botanical supplements that enhance sexual vitality. A best-selling author and publisher of 34 books and programs, including Sexual Soulmates, Relationship Magic, Revive Her Drive, Ravish Him, Steamy Sex Ed, The Passion Patch, Hormone Balancing, and Hot to Trot. Susan has been featured in the New York Times and on CNBC and the Today Show, as well as frequent appearances on ABC, CBS, The CW, Fox, and NBC. You can find The Susan Breton Show at betterlover.com, her personal shares on Instagram at Susan Breton, and her lust for life supplements, flow and desire at the20store.com. Well, okay, everyone, just giving you a heads up that you may not want little kids nearby for this one. I'm talking with Susan Bratton, intimacy expert to millions, and we're diving deep into the topics of intimacy, passion, and so much more. While they're all beautiful and important topics for any romantic relationship, I always respect that you may want to share your own views with little ones on your own time and in your own way. Having said that, you're about to learn so much about the real obstacles to intimacy from who I believe is the world's leading expert on the topic. Buckle up, everyone. Here's Susan. Okay, everybody, we're with my friend, Susan Breton, and I brought her in because we are talking about intimacy today. And, you know, this is one of those topics when it comes to betrayal, the last thing you may be thinking about is intimacy. When there are trust issues, when you've been betrayed, you don't feel safe, you don't feel valued, you may not feel sexy, all of that. Well, Susan is here to help us through all of it. Welcome, Susan. Hello, darling Debbie. How are you today? Oh, I'm so good. Thanks. I'm Thank I'm you. so glad to have you on the show because this is really an area that gets so affected yes. with trust issues, with betrayal, mm-hmm. and we've never talked about it on the podcast. So yes. who better than you to bring this up? Tell us, can you tell us how from, from your end, how you see sexuality uh, affected and, and intimacy affected after trust issues and betrayal? Yes, definitely. Well, one of the things that I wanted to talk about was an experience that I had that made me realize how giant an issue betrayal really is for people. A lot of people who've been betrayed and have trust issues feel very alone. And I want to let you know that as an intimacy expert, as someone who helps people transform having sex into making love, I ha- I'm, I'm, a, I'm an attraction. I'm a tra- I attract a lot of people who've been betrayed because they don't want to be in a transactional sexual relationship. That's just not the place for them. And a lot of what I do, uh, like my book, Sexual Soulmates, is about the six essentials to connected sex. So I'm, I'm really a person who teaches people how to attach, how to co-regulate, how to be present with each other rather than worrying about the past or catastrophizing the future. These are a lot of the tenets that I teach people. And one day I was working on an, um, a segment for a television show. I, do, I go on TV a lot and um, I was going on a doctor show and um, I sent out an email to, I have a newsletter, a sex tips newsletter. And I have about, oh, probably close to half a million readers. And I sent out an email and I said, reply to me if you aren't getting the kind of intimacy and, 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 and for me, intimacy means physical intimacy, lovemaking, sex, in addition to the emotional intimacy. If you're not getting the kind of intimacy that you crave, what is it that's holding you back? What is the roadblock? What is the obstacle? 
And I won't be able to reply to everyone because there's so many of you, but trust me, I'm reading every reply and I'm going to come up with some answers for you. I'm going to help you solve your problems. And I pressed send and oh my God, bing, 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 hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of responses were flowing into my inbox. And I started reading them and it took me a couple of days to read through them all. And one of the, one of my techniques that works very well for me to think things through is to talk my problems out loud. And another one for me is to sleep on it, to ask myself to solve my problem by going to bed and dreaming about it. Sure. You have seven, eight hours to marinate on the idea. It's a perfect idea. Yes. And I went to bed thinking to myself, every email that came in. Oh, and, and one of the caveats to the reply was not having a partner's not the obstacle, not, not an obstacle I'm dealing with. This is not about, I don't have someone to date that being the, this is what are their physical, emotional, and it's always a combination of physical and emotional, you know, it's all, it's all one big ball of wax. What, what are those issues? What's holding people back? And every, every email that came in, I thought, well, I could solve that problem. I could solve that problem. I, and I'm talking about cancer, erectile dysfunction, you know, I mean, everything you could have possibly imagined. There was a giant list of issues and I read them all and I thought about it. And I actually had one of my assistants, Maurice, go back in to every email and make a spreadsheet and make me a list and put every email into a bucket to see what the issues really were. And they were just classic medical issues, mm -hmm. most of them, except for one issue I would have never come up with myself. And it was 20% of the responses and it was betrayal. That was no. the bucket. It was betrayal. I've been betrayed. I can't love. I can't trust. It holds me back. I just can't get over it. I'm alone. I'm afraid. And I don't know what to do. <laughs> and one of the things that I did to solve the problem was, you know how they say you can give a man a fish or you can teach a man to fish or a woman to fish, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? I wanted to teach them to fish. I wanted to get, let them solve their own problems because I couldn't email back hundreds and hundreds of people and tell them what to do. So what I did was I came up with a structure that helps people overcome and get to the connection and intimacy that they deserve. And I ended up calling it the magic pill method because I felt like, you know, so much of it was health related that I felt like if I could give someone a magic pill to solve their problems, what would it be? And it was essentially this structure. If you are, if you know that your betrayal, if you're in a relationship <clears throat> and you know that your issue is betrayal mm -hmm. or any of the other issues that came in, my recommendation was to, and what I found was, and this is why this became the way I taught you to solve the problem yourself. What I found was that when people hit a roadblock, they don't talk about it with their partner. They just hit the wall and they stop and then they pull back. And then and it gets then, worse. What? And then it gets worse. I mean, right? Nothing's being solved that way, certainly nothing's being solved. They, they, they essentially pull back and the problem never gets solved because the problem never gets talked about because mm -hmm. they don't feel like they know that what the solution is. And a big part of it is that I looked at every single one of these problems and I thought, well, the answer is you have to work around this. You have to compromise or you have to fix this. Those are really the answers, but you can't do any of those things if you can't talk about what it is that you had, that you used to love that you're not getting anymore or what you want that you're not getting. Mm -hmm. So essentially what I told people to do in the magic pill method can be downloaded at magicpillmethod.com. It's a workbook. You can print out the worksheets and follow along. So if you're driving in your car right now, listening to Dr. Debbie and I, you don't have to worry. You can just go to magicpillmethod.com and it's there for you. It's my gift. And it'll be um, in show notes as well. Perfect. We're all, we are organized, Deb. 
Um, what, what I did was I said, first of all, eat a good meal together and set your intention for a compassionate heart and your lovingness. And then sit down on the sofa together, face to face, hold each other's hands and, and I give them a worksheet that says, write down all the things you used to do that you miss, that you feel you can't do anymore. And then make a list of the things that you would like to do that you feel you can do. And some of them are still, they were on the original list and they move over. And some of them might be new things that you want. Because one of the things that I can tell you about our sexuality is that our sexual growth and our personal growth are two sides of the same coin. As we age, as we mature, we can get better in bed and have more fulfilling intimacy and heart connection than we did when we were younger. We are an ever expanding possibility. And it's our choice to either contract or expand. And Debbie, I know that your listeners and viewers mm -hmm. of your show are people who are oriented toward expansion. They're looking for the solutions to solve their problems. And, and before you go on, I just want to stop you there. Yeah. Just even those first steps, having that meal, sitting down, looking at each other, holding hands, asking each other those questions, that can be huge for someone who's experienced betrayal and shattered trust, because even just looking at each other in the eyes, yeah. that can be so intimate, even more intimate than, than maybe what they've been doing. Yeah. Yes, it's very true. And then there, the step two is you share your list. This is what we used to do that I miss. And this is what are some things I think I could do. And he, these are the needs that I have. And then you, you share yours and your partner listens and your partner shares theirs and you listen. And that's the first step. There's, there's no next step that in that moment, you just listen. Mm. And then you go away and you wait for a few days because women generally have more access to their emotions and feelings than our male bodied partners. And it's unfair for us to do a dump and then expect a response. Mm -hmm. So the idea that you're just going to share what we used to do that I miss, other things I think we could do going forward, that's when you're opening up a lot of possibility. And when you hear the things that you miss that you can't do anymore, and you hear the things that you could still do, you're not only recognizing where the problem is we we used to do this and I can't do it anymore and these are things I still want to do then you see that there's a lot of things you can still do mm -hmm. and you look at what you can't do anymore and you say okay so when you get back together that and you give each other your list this is a written down mm -hmm. thing because you want to be able to go back and look at it and think about it and digest it and masticate on that a bit and then when you get back together this the second goal is to Find that cluster of things you can do together that you share. And then if there are any deal breakers where it's like, I don't know if I can be in a marriage if, we, if I can't have this thing that you think we can't do anymore. And let's just say, for example, it's intercourse. Mm -hmm. And it's intercourse because it's too painful for me and I can't do it. That's where the second round is we look at what we can do and we talk about, are there any things in here that are a deal breaker that we really should actually just try to see if there's a fix for, a solution for. Mm -hmm. And then the third meeting about it is, okay, we're gonna try to solve your vaginal pain because I really don't wanna be in a marriage where I can't be that close and intimate to you, where I can't be inside you and make love to you. And it could be any number of things, but that's a very, very, very common one. It's the mm -hmm. tip of the spear. 
Because a lot of times when women suffer from vaginal pain, as an example, they feel like, well, it's just my hormones. It's just me getting old. It's what happens to everybody when that's absolutely not true. Um, I have three areas of expertise. One is passionate lovemaking techniques, pleasuring skills, because we can, we can procreate without any education. That's just tab A into slot B. But making love, transforming having sex into making love actually takes learned skills. For the large majority of women, an example would be that women aren't naturally, they don't orgasm from intercourse, yet we're in long-term relationships with male-bodied partners where it's very easy for them to orgasm from intercourse. And then she feels like, oh, it's just me. I can't do it. There's something wrong with me. I'm broken. He thinks, well, she can't do it. There's something wrong with her. She's just broken. When neither of them realize it's simply a learned skill and conditions must be right. And in betrayal, that's really um, getting back into intimacy is a, uh, um, you know, the, the, the question you have to look at is what conditions will make it right? Mm -hmm. And so um, I'm going to come back to that. I want to get more to betrayal, but I want to finish off on what the method itself is. So you're really getting the process and then you can download it and do it later. But um, the, the third piece is we're going to fix the problem because my first platform is technique. My second platform is bedroom communication skills. And my third platform is sexual regenerative treatments that allow for ageless sexuality. Because at 60 years old, I'm having the best sex of my life. And I will be having it, you can mark my words and watch me do it for the next 40 years, I'll be continuing to expand my lovemaking connection and pleasure with my partner of 30 years. So if you are thinking about, it hurts, I can't do it, there's no solution, it's because you simply haven't done enough research to find the solutions. There and are solutions. Stop, right. And I want to stop you there because how much of the pain has to do with mindset and trauma and, and just c conditioning from just past stuff that hasn't been cleared up? Tons. Some of it is physiological and some of it is simply physical, uh, low estrogen, low nitric oxide, you know, um, thinning of tissues, uh, an old episiotomy sore, loss of sensation, you know, lack of blood flow. I mean, these are, these are just like super common things. And there are so many wonderful regenerative treatments that remove the pain and return and restore the pleasure that um, couples just simply don't even know are available. So a big part of my work in the world is teaching people how to reverse atrophy and painful sex. Mm -hmm. Because it's no, you can't use techniques and bedroom communication skills if it doesn't feel good. Right. And when people hit a wall, they don't even look for the solutions. So the third piece of the magic pill method is one of us is a good researcher. One of us is a better online researcher than the other. And one of us is better at making appointments and finding the right practitioners to help us and make the decisions about that. One of us is really good at getting us there on time and bringing us home. You know, it's like, <laughs> right, right. you want to divide and conquer if, you, if you're in a partnered relationship to fix the problem together. Because when you have the commitment, it's not just, okay, your vagina is broken, go fix it. It's, our vagina is broken. <laughs> so we're, we have to go fix yeah. it. So I imagine there, there could be a lot of uh, just shame and feeling uncomfortable. Like if, if it, it comes down to, let's say, you know, that's the, she feels uncomfortable or whatever. And then she's like, oh, oh it's my fault. I'm so embarrassed. I'm so ashamed. I, I'm always trying to get into the minds of my listeners and viewers. Yeah. What, what can she do to, because the goal is to repair the relationship and the, and the intimacy. How do you suggest she move past that? By understanding that when you are a woman and you are estrogen dominant, you are going to blame yourself. Estrogen makes you feel like it's your fault. <laughs> T testosterone makes him feel like it's your fault because testosterone is the molecule the hormone of certainty and confidence this is why men overestimate their skill in the bedroom and the boardroom 
This is why women don't go for the jobs that men go for. And the women are overqualified and the men are underqualified. So you, if you just understand the nature of the beast, the literal beast we live in, where we are run by our hormones, our neurotransmitters, our childhood trauma, our recent traumas. And that's another thing that I want to tell you. Uh, on my Better Lover um, website, betterlover.com, there's a couple of things that are resources. One of the resources that I, I don't really need to go into it right now, but my personal story is one of trauma and abuse. And I have overcome that to become a quite strong and amazing woman with a lot of confidence and a giant heart of compassion for people. And I have a belief- Anybody who that, knows you knows that. <laughs> the so lion-hearted good. one. I am yeah. the lion heart. <laughs> um, and, and I've gone through so much trauma uh, and, and myriad ways that I, I, I really understand the coming through trauma to the other side. I've had, I've done a lot of work in a lot of different modalities to do that. And one of the things that's really good on my better lover YouTube or my better lover website or YouTube channel, I'm on both places is my personal story. So you can hear the things that happened to me and how I overcame them because the level of things that happened to me and how I overcame them is a good story of triumph over trauma and betrayal. The second thing that's on there that is really good is a series I did with Dr. Ariel Giaretto, who helps who helped me put together a series on healing my sexuality. So specifically how to overcome sexual trauma and how to move forward and regain your sexual pleasure birth the birthright that you have to your sexual pleasure mm -hmm. and we do that in two ways we do it as you're the you're the traumatized or your partner has been traumatized because so many of us are actually dealing with the trauma the betrayal the pain of our partner's life story and that affects love, us i love that you're saying that because we see that all the time within the pbt institute there's the person who's been traumatized that the betrayed person but there's also that the, the betrayer and it's very often that betrayer had let's say that there's a sex and porn addiction well it could be because there was as some sort of sexual abuse in childhood or something. Yeah. We see that all the time. Yes. Yeah. So I, I love that you're coming from both spaces and, and even more so it's so easy to be traumatized and stay stuck because we, you know, we just don't know there's a way out of it, yes. but I love whenever there are examples of someone who, yes, they've, they've had an experience, but that's not where it ended. That's where it began. That's where moving through it was really the, that strength, that determination, that resilience. And I'm not suggesting it's easy, everybody. But what I am suggesting is everybody has their own individual recipe for figuring out what that is. And it sounds like you tried a few different things to find your way out of it. And then how better, you know, when you heal to teach, which is what you do. So I just so admire you for that. I've had multiple traumas over multiple years, over multiple decades of my life of varying degrees. And there are two things that I can tell you. Number one, it is extremely common. There are very few of us that have not been traumatized. And I think that's number one, when you realize that we're living in a world where we're, everyone is dealing with traumas of various kinds and various degrees over our entire lifetime, that is one piece. And then the second piece is that you know, I, in a way, I feel that the things that happened to me are the things that gave me the courage to be the person I am in the world, to have the compassion and the belief that anyone who's been betrayed or traumatized can move through it and have a connection to themselves and to other and spirit or God through our sexuality and pleasure. And it's so important to have that pleasure that I really want to encourage if you're listening and you're like, I don't know, I'm scared. I can tell you that I can remember unpacking my traumas at certain points and worrying that they were going to send me into a tailspin. You know, I don't want to relive that. I don't want to pull out Pandora's box and go through all that stuff again. It can be hard, but with the right modalities for you. And that's Another piece of it, I talk a lot about over time, I've shared a lot of different trauma healing modalities. And one of the ones in the sexual sphere 
that's very important is hands-on or somatic trauma healing. Mm -hmm. And I like the, what used to be called the Peter Levine formula, and mm -hmm. now it's called the somatic experience technique. Mm -hmm. um, that is very, very good for sexual trauma. Okay. Um, and the woman with whom I did the healing my sexuality series at betterlover.com, she is a train the trainer. She travels the world training experts on somatic experience technique. And uh, most people don't go into therapy to heal their wounds. Most people are healed by themselves and their partners or going into workshops or going to try some of these modalities. So, you know, there's a million ways to heal. It's just finding the ones that resonate with you. And the first one does a little work. And then there might be another one that heals another part of the wound. And then you might uncover wounds that you weren't even aware that are actually running your system. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing that I think is, but there are two pieces. One is an awareness of what's running your system. And the other is getting to compassion for your transgressors. And it's very hard for people who've been betrayed, wounded, or traumatized to ever feel like it could be possible to get beyond that to the point where they have compassion for their transgressor. But I've done a wonderful conversation with someone you know, Dr. Keisha Ewers. Mm -hmm. She and I created uh, a, a, a video and a workbook together. And it's free. So I'm going to give you another resource. You didn't know I had all these resources, did you? And everybody else, just so you know, Dr. Keisha has been on the show. So check out that episode as well. I am sure she has. I'm sure. She, I can't believe she's only been on once. Yeah. Um, Keisha and I created something called Rewriting My Libido Story. Oh, I love that. And that's where you, we give you specific tools. And it's at, I think it's just at libidostory.com. Let me look. Um Let's see. I'm just going to get it for you because um, libidobook.com. Mm -hmm. Libidobook.com. Okay, we'll show notes too. Dot com. Okay. Um, that we walk you through the process all the way into compassion for your transgressor, which allows you to <sighs> let it go. You're actually the one that was better off than the person who traumatized you. When you begin that to look at it that way, mm -hmm. that yes, you, you were wounded, but you weren't that person, right? They're the one you need to feel sorry for mm -hmm. because they're the one that hurts, not the one that got hurt. So there's just so many things in this that are, that I think are, are very valuable. And, um, the compassion is like the end game. So I always like to give people the end games on things. And, and I have to tell you, that's so consistent with, with what I teach as well, because Good. coming out of an experience with, with betrayal, let's say, for example, first, at first, you're so sad, and then you become really angry, mm -hmm. which is good because ang anger is movement. And then you move towards pity. Like really you had to do, yeah, you have to do that, that kind of thing. And then you move towards compassion. And I always say, when you're in compassion, you're healed. And yes. it's really true. But to get there, everybody has their own concoction, their own things they do. And also uh, everybody check out the work of Peter Levine. He wrote the book, Somatic yes. Experiencing. You know, he's he's the one who who is does tremendous work in this area. And that body-based, you've heard the issues are in the tissues. They yes. are, and it needs to be released. So I'm glad you touched on that as well. Yeah, his book is something about the tiger, I think. Um, so let's talk about releasing the tissues and let's talk about sexual trauma. This is, this is the next area for, uh, for those of you who have had sexual trauma to consider. And I'm talking about our female body partners, but I can apply this equally to our male body partners. Um, this kind of healing uh, heals people across the gender spectrum. And that is something called G-spot healing or tantric healing or goddess massage work or yoni massage healing or yoni healing. These are a lot of different words for the same basic thing. When, when you deal with somatic experience technique people, they actually find the places, they're kind of hands-on people. 
Mm -hmm. They can feel things in your body that you aren't even aware of. And they can identify and isolate where you've stored trauma. It could be in your kidneys. It could be in your heart. It could be in your belly. It could be in your back. I mean, a lot of back pain is childhood trauma, right? Mm -hmm. And for sexual healing, a lot of it is in the G spot, but I want to show you what the G spot is. I'm going to give you, since we have video as well as audio, you might want to watch Dr. Debbie's video version of this because I want to show you what the G spot is and what we're going for. Now, the G spot is not a spot, it's actually an area inside the vagina and outside the vagina. There are two G spots, if you will. There's G spot number one, which most people are kind of aware of maybe what it is and where it is. And there's G spot number two that nobody even knows about. And we, when we're talking about G spot healing, we're talking about traumatic release of the enteric nervous system. We're holding emotion in our tissue, in our vulva, in our female genitalia, that is from the trauma and it needs to be released. And I wanna show you where the spots are that you rub and touch and stimulate. And then I'm gonna walk you through um, the process for doing it. Because for many people, I mean, there are, there are traumatic, re vulval traumatic release experts in cities, but they're darn hard to find because it's not illegal, but it's just an oddball kind of a thing. But it, someday it'll be something you just look up online and you have someone come to your home with their massage table and they do a series of visits with you. They release the tissues and it's a major part of your healing. I've personally also gone through this myself. I've had my own experiences of this. And it was a massive, massive shift, shift for me in my own sexuality. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what the vulva looks like. And then I'm going to peel away the skin and show you what's underneath. So this is your orientation. So this is the vulva the external female genitalia. There's the mons on top, which must be stimulated to let blood flow and movement flow because you said it earlier, Debbie, movement is healing. Mm -hmm. Then you have the outer labia, which are underneath the pubic hair on each side to the opening of the vestibule. The vestibule is the opening here. You've got the inner labia inside the outer labia. They come down to the bottom here to what's called the fourchette. That bottom transfers to the perineal area. And then you have the anus. On the top, the inner labia come above and form the clitoral hood. And the clitoral hood has the shaft of the clitoris in it and the glands hiding under there. And when you pull back the hood, you can see the glands or the tip of the clitoris. Inside the vestibule, you have the opening to the vagina, which is called the introidal sphincter. It's a round muscle that squeezes, and there can often be a lot of damage to that. I had some damage to the lower area of my introidal sphincter, and we healed that trauma through PRP, getting the O shot. Dr. Robin Benson has given me six O shots and it's completely transformed the pleasure and sensation that I feel in my vulva or yoni, Y-O-N-I. That's a tantric lovemaking word for our vulva is the yoni, Y-O-N-I. Inside the vestibule, is the vaginal opening or introitus or introidal sphincter. And above it is the urethral exit where your peepee -pee comes out. And that's the second G spot. So the first G spot is inside the vaginal opening on the roof of the vagina. And it's a long tube that comes right out to the vestibule. And that's where your urine exits. But outside here, there's this little rosebud of tissue that's part of the G spot as well. And then further up, you get to the clitoris. So that's what it looks like, but here's what it looks like. So if I show you all that, now you're oriented. Now I'm gonna take away the skin and this is what's right underneath. This is what it looks like inside you. Mm -hmm. You have as much erectile tissue surrounding the opening to your vagina as your male bodied partner has in his entire penis. And I'm going to show you what his penis looks like too. This is his erectile tissue. Mm -hmm. 
And it's these big, long chambers right here. These chambers are these arms and legs and these sponges. So we have spun, all of this tissue gets engorged with blood flow to messed, swollen, puffed up. And that's what we need as women to feel orgasmic pleasure. If our erectile tissue is flaccid, we have less surface area, less pleasure, and less enjoyment of sex. And one of the things that's very important for people who have been sexually traumatized or betrayed is that they need to have everything slowed down like molasses in lovemaking so that they can slowly relax and begin the process of arousal that allows the blood to flow into all these silly little chambers that we have so that it gets plumped up and we feel pleasure. The body is so brilliant. Yeah, this is just, you know, I, it's, it's so interesting when you explain it this way, it's like, who knew there were this many parts and what's going on? And it's just so wonderful. Unfortunately, I mean, I, I can talk to you all day. We may need to bring you back, but what, as we wrap up, I want to make sure I, I, I get you to answer this question. What do you want to make sure everyone knows? Yes. So the fin to finish it off, yeah. this it, your G spot is not a spot. It's this long tube and it's like a pool noodle that the kids play with in the pool. And the spot ends at the opening to your vestibule, but it goes inside and travels the length of your vagina. And when you want to release sexual trauma, you want to work your way very slowly into the very top of the vagina near the entrance. And it's going to feel hard and ridgy and armored. And what you want to do over time, if you have a partner, they can do it, or you can do it yourself, and you can use G-Spot toys and tools to do it yourself. Um, if you go to gspotjoy.com, I have a G-Spot toy guide for healing and pleasure where I give you budget and luxury tools to use yourself. So don't feel like if you're not partnered, you can't heal yourself. You can heal yourself or you can have your partner do it. And when you stroke that area and you enliven the tissue and you bring blood flow, it will slowly release. And as it releases, what you will find is that you may cry mm. after being touched. You may sob you may cackle like a witch. You may make a sound that comes out that's a scream or a growl, or it sounds like a freight train's coming through your bedroom. And you will do that a few times. And as you do that, that tissue will release, it will drop, it will expand, it will soften, it will engorge. And your responses will begin to diminish in the negative and expand to the positive, and you will begin to feel a level of pleasure in the seat of your creativity that starts to grow and grow and grow and expand. You may have your first orgasms, or you may have incredible progress at becoming a massively multi-orgasmic person who no longer dissociates and clamps down and fears, but instead is open, 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 open. Because the trick to feeling sexual pleasure is not that, oh, I'm trying to be what I'm trying to be. It's the, opening, always opening everything. It's birthing your orgasm and it's releasing and letting go. And I think you cannot do it without that G spot pleasuring or that yoni awakening. So you might do a lot of psychotherapy and still feel like you can't trust in the bedroom. And this is a way to get over that. You know, I, I, Susan, I feel like you, you gave such, uh, such wisdom and insight for so many people struggling because I know what an issue in my community this is. Yeah. And, and I love that there's this practical side of it, uh, releasing the, the physical, the mental, the emotional, all of it leading to just just happiness, which is what we want and yeah. greater intimacy. So as we, we really, we're wrapping up, what do you just want to make sure quickly what everybody knows? What should they all know? 
that you can get through it, that you can heal your trauma, and that you can come out the other side and remember your essential self before the trauma. You can get back to the garden of who you really are and begin to live life without all the stops and the things that you do to manage the things that happen to you. That's what I wish for you, to get back to the garden of your soul essence. Beautiful. And it's becoming more proactive versus reactive and really going through going through this journey the best way possible. Susan, I want to thank you so much for your wisdom, for your insight, Thanks, for Susan. sharing a topic that needs to be heard and understood. I, I can't wait for our viewers and our listeners to really dive into this and, and explore the possibilities. I know it will help them so much. Thank you so much, my friend. Thank you. Well, that was informative. Stay in touch with Susan by going to magicpillmethod.com and we'll have all of our information in the show notes at thepvtinstitute.com forward slash podcast. Here's my biggest takeaway, the magic pill method, which goes something like this. Hold hands, look at each other, write, then share your list of what we used to do, what we miss and what we still can do based on where you are right now. Find something you can share, find the deal breakers and solve the issue. It's all about finding and then removing the obstacles that are preventing intimacy so you can more fully enjoy and appreciate this aspect of your relationship. Whether that means compromising, working around it or fixing the problem, it needs to be addressed and here's a great way to do it. For other areas preventing intimacy like trauma, betrayal, be sure to take the post-betrayal syndrome quiz, which you can find at the pbtinstitute.com forward slash quiz so you can see what may need cleaning up. Also subscribe, rate, and review so you don't miss an episode. Thanks for listening. Can't wait to be with you next time. And here's to your breakthrough.